For nearly 30 years, she was a broadcaster and anchor at NBC in Los Angeles. She was a regular substitute for Jane Pauley on the Today Show. She was the longest running host of the uh, Rose Bowl Parade on NBC. Now she is a best-selling mystery author and her new book, Graveyard Shift, is out. Kelly Lang is here today. Very happy to have you here today, Kelly. My pleasure, Gregory. Uh, I'm exhausted just listening to you tell everything I've done over the last <laughs> and, 800 years. And that was the short version. Yeah, really. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. But I will say that um, having researched you thoroughly on the internet and everywhere else. Which, by the um, way, impresses me greatly. You really do you. your homework. I've done a zillion of these shows. You know, when you're on the book tour, you do. And here's a man, folks who read the book, A, and B, did all the research. Congratulations. She's great. Okay, we've got to have her on more often. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you want to keep, just keep talking. That's fine. Hey, I like where you were going with this, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but what really stuck out, though, of all the incredible the things on your background, your very successful broadcast career and now the best-selling books, um, September 11th. Mm. Um, you mentioned on your website had a very dramatic influence on Well, it life. did. You and know, Greg, I'm a New Yorker, mm. and my mom lost her best friend, Millie, 80 years old, coming out here to California to mm. see her grandchildren, and my mom drove her to the airport and pulled out a $10 bill and said, uh, Millie, have a drink on me on the airplane. Have a great time. And that's the flight, Flight 11, that turned around and went back into the first tower. Mm. Obviously, it, it knocked my family for a loop. We, you know, we grew up with Millie. And... I'm sure that, you know, it, it affected everybody. Sure. And it was 30 years for me. It was coming on 30 years. And I, not that I didn't love it, I did. Mm -hmm. But that was such a wake-up call, Greg, that life is short. Yep. And I did that, and now I wanted to do this, you know. So I did. I made the decision. I was in negotiations for a new contract in another four years. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no, you know, I have enough money because uh, I don't need a lot. Fishnet stockings, you know, they, <laughs> they're costly. But beyond that, so that's the the uh, the day that I decided to uh, to not go ahead with another deal mm. and to write seriously. And I said, you know, if I'm going to walk away from a lucrative job like this, then I better get a book out every year. And guess what? I have. Yes. I love it. It's an odd, odd career, you know, for me uh -huh. because I'm in my you know uh, my office, lonely and solitary. You know, right. and and um, eating stuff that you know I shouldn't when you're sitting in front of the uh, uh, the computer for ten hours, uh, trying to make deadline, yep. and then it's done after about six seven months, and then oh. you're out doing all this, yep. and then you have to be gregarious again. You have to take the weight off. You know. Well, and you have the <laughs> the background for that. God knows, and uh, but also you can tell in the books though too that you have definitely used those thirty years. Well, okay, let me just cut to the chase here, Kelly. Yes. How much of Maxie Poole, your her heroine, is you, and how much is fiction? Maxie Poole is an anchor reporter. She walks my walk. She is exactly like me. Uh -huh. She's my sleuth. Exactly like me, except she's taller, thinner, younger, sexier, and blonder. Little Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But you could tell that you were really drawing, as she said beforehand, and as people say, you know, you write what you know. Absolutely. And you obviously are writing what you know. Yes, and she's in the thick of it, in the newsroom, and she's a reporter, basically. Uh, she anchors one show, but she's basically a reporter. She gets mm -hmm. out and she covers the news, yep. and uh, she gets into all the, um, the stuff that, that we get into doing yep. it. And, and one reason, you asked me if I liked the book when we were talking yesterday. Yes. And I can say that, I truthfully say that I do. And what did I say to you? I said, well, what are you going to tell an author? <laughs> what are you going to tell yeah, the author? No. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yeah, I, well, if I cancel the interview, then you know that I know. Uh, yes. <laughs> no, I appreciate your being here. But I, but what I liked about the book, though, was, number one, having a bit of a journalism background myself. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, like from high school journalism and college journalism, wrote for my college sure. paper and started my own paper. But even at that level, what I found very interesting was all of the, Reporters know everything. We had all the dirt on campus. I mean, you know, you'd call people because, yeah. and, and that's everybody what, calls it into you. Oh yeah. By the yep. time you've been doing it for a while, uh, you know, you you know everything. And if you yep. don't, I mean, you, you know how to find anything out uh -huh. anytime. You can find out anything about anybody, what time they yep. brush their teeth in the morning, who they voted for, all of this with about three phone calls. Yep. You know, and it's a lot of fun. It's wonderful. And what people I think don't realize is sometimes that. Um, well, maybe they do. I don't know, but certainly reporters do. You know, um, when you're interviewing somebody, you know, you have the on the record and then the off the record. Oh yes, during the commercial break. That's right. Like we're going to do here in a minute. I know everything about you now because <laughs> I'm still a journalist. Uh, we're not going to go there, but <laughs> no, not on camera. But um, 
but you know, but it's that way that people will, you know, officially, and, and then you know, they'll tell you, oh, this happened. But then as soon as the camera's off or the, you know, or you're off the record, then they'll tell you what really happened or yeah. what will happen. <laughs> and you know, and she's working. In other words, the police or the prosecutors mm -hmm. or the attorneys or the, you know, I, and you know what's interesting, Greg? I found that um, as a journalist, to get people on camera, when you bring a camera person uh, with a camera on his or her shoulder, uh -huh. and uh, to, to a person who has just witnessed a drug deal going down, has just witnessed a fatal car crash or something, mm -hmm. uh, and, and you want to get them on camera, what do they do? They go like this. They don't want to be there. You know why? Because yep. they don't want to be in court. Um, and no, we won't talk about the Michael Jackson case, but <laughs> they don't want to be in court for nine case. months, uh, and, and so they run. When you're writing fiction, Everybody wants to help. It's really great fun. Mm -hmm. One of my books, I called over at St. Joe's Medical Center across the street from NBC uh -huh. in Burbank because I needed to uh, get a, a medical opinion. Uh, I called. I said, hello, I'd like to speak to a doctor. And she said, uh, call 911 and hung up on me. But <laughs> I did call right back. <laughs> is and, that the person, sorry to interrupt, but is that, you mentioned you thanks a doctor in your book for teaching you how to kill people. Oh, no, people. that's that the, the uh, who... Poison Control Center in Fresno oh, okay. for the state of California. He teaches me how to kill people. <laughs> yeah. And uh, as I said beforehand, that's why you're on that side of the room. That's right. That's exactly right. Because, you know, I could get away with it. Uh, if I had, uh, you know, the, the propensity rolling. to kill somebody, people have asked me that. Would you be able to do it and get away with it? Yes, I could now. I won't, oh. but I could. But anyway, I called this doctor over at St. Joe's. That'll Joe's. be my novel. Yeah. <laughs> How Kelly Lang tried to kill me. <laughs> no. <laughs> During the uh, PSA. No. Um, I called this doctor, and, and uh, I got a, a young intern at um, St. Joseph's Medical Center in Burbank. Uh -huh. And I said, uh, doctor, I said, my heroine, I, I need to have her in a coma. She needs to be in a coma for three days. While everything else is going on around her, I need her fighting for her life. We don't know if she's going to live or die. Uh -huh. When she, uh, she does come out of it, she lives, and her brains are not scrambled, and also no scars, please. She's beautiful. She's my heroine. Uh -huh. This was in my first book, A Standalone. So he says, hmm. He says, let's shoot her in the chest. Shoot her in the chest. So he says, this is good. Sure. That's nice and clean, yeah. huh? Yeah, shoot her in the chest. And he told, explained to me how the bullet would go around and miss this and miss that. She would make it. And, and I always give my sources my phone number, of course. If you think of anything, call me. And sure enough, about 4 in the morning, because I write all night, I get a call. Mm. He's on the night shift, too, from this doctor. And he says, um, he says, Kelly, he said, you know, I've been thinking. I don't know what they do at St. Joe's Medical Center. Tonight. He says, I've been thinking <laughs> about this. Makes me wonder, too. Uh... He says, yeah. He said, um, you know, after she shot, when she, she falls, she needs to hit her head on a marble table or some really hard surface, and that will cause the internal bleeding, and therefore she will be in a coma fighting for her life because it's touch and go, and then we can pull her out of it by, and I'm saying, this is terrific. <laughs> and that's all in my first book called Trophy Wife. This, uh, do you know anything about this doctor? There may be a story there. No. <laughs> I don't know. Hopefully it was something he wouldn't I don't want to know. know uh... No, you don't want to do, know too much ever. So you do your homework too, obviously. Yes, I, mean, you... I have. Well, you and I were talking about Tom Snyder, my great, great buddy, yeah. whom I talked to two nights ago. He's wonderful. And uh, I say, Tom, you taught me everything I know. And he said, and that's all you know, Kelly. You know, that's, that's the kind of guy he is. But um, he would show up. We did a show called Sunday together. That went for 10 years. Uh -huh. And um, Tommy, they give us a packet like this this thick on Friday afternoon yep. and we were to study we'd have you know six or eight interviews plus this plus that plus the location yep. and mine would come back I would study I study and everything would be all written on and wrinkled up and everything Tom's would come back because we were told to bring them back pristine all the <laughs> elastic bands Osmosis, still in place you know, he just put it by it, his head and, uh... mm, and uh, you know say I always I hold my book the whole time no matter where I am <laughs> here, we'll, we'll get a plug in for but you anyway he he um, he he just didn't he didn't he did it that way and he always took you somewhere you didn't expect to go around the bend and and twists and turns and I did it the other way I I'm a grind and I do my homework just like you so as you said everybody has their own style exactly right everybody has their own methodology of getting the job done and that's yeah. what it takes that's what you have to do right get the job done and when it comes to killing you know how to get the job done I do know how to do that <laughs> <laughs> thanks to my pals at the poison control center. It must be untraceable, by the way. And the best way to do it, I mean, the, the most successful killings, by the way, are when you live with the person. You know, if you're killing a husband oh. or a wife, because... Okay, well, more <laughs> advice on how to kill someone when we come back in just a minute with Kelly Lang. <laughs> I'm not sure if I'll be back or not, but uh, if the chair is empty, call 911. That's right, he's out. Uh, Mrs. DeBruzzo, I'm Ed McMahon, and we're Ed signing Mc up You're people for... Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah
<laughs> Mr. Murphy, Ed McMahon. Uh, we're starting up. No, 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 no. no Dreams no. really do come it, true. Oh, but dinero, dinero. No, no, no. Con no, no yes, Ed con McMahon, cameras. see. Ed McMahon. Yes, Ed McMahon. We're having our first Ed ever. Ed McMahon. Yes. <laughs> Tuesday night at the high school. Don't you get it? Don't want to get it. Uh, we're starting up the uh, neighborhood watch in this area, and here's all <laughs> the information. Uh, Stevie, get down here, please. Oh, we just did. Oh, it's just, it's Five, just... six, seven, eight. No tango dinero. dinero. Neighborhood see. watch. We're having this neighborhood watch, the first one. Larry, right. get some pants I'll, I'll come down back. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Help play a part in the safety of your community. To find out how you can start or join a neighborhood watch, log on to usaonwatch.org. We are back with Kelly Lang, broadcaster, author of uh, Graveyard Shift. Graveyard yes. Shift, that's right. And she was just telling us how to kill your spouse before the commercial break. Well, here. you know, in Dead File, that's uh, the one I, uh, that was last year's book, Dead File. The Dead File is the file in a newsroom where you lock up tape that cannot go on the air because it's too gory or it's uh -huh. been illegally shot or what have you. And uh, reporters can't get to it because we'll put anything on the air, as you know. So, yes. uh, and of course, in Dead File, the clues come out of the Dead File. Oh. But um, I talked to the poison control people, and they, I, I was inspired by, um, all of my stories are kind of ripped from the headlines. I've either covered them or they're, you know, it's news, it's news. Was, was the, the basis of this story, you know, was it a, a actual murder in LA or was it a compilation of Ah, uh, it's a compilation, or? yeah. But Dead File was a, a definite story and it's about a woman and we'll probably get sued now, you don't mind, do you? Um, sue, her, sue her, don't sue me. Yeah, well, she... Did I have you sign that <laughs> oh, release no, form? You're, Actually, you're, no, you're, you're in on this. You're no, in wait, on just this. sign the release form, Kelly. And then oh, I sign everything. Want. It doesn't okay. matter. It doesn't matter. They <laughs> sue you anyway. But anyway, um, she killed her husband, by the way. By She was a toxicologist, and she worked in a lab. This mm. is an L.A. case, okay? Mm. And um, she made a patch with all the proper poisons that she knew would be lasting just long enough to let him get out of bed and go to work and then keel over. Wow. And it would be untraceable and sure as heck, you know, at night, in the middle of the night, she went, slapped the patch on his arm. <laughs> and and he got up in the morning, went to work and died there. <laughs> <laughs> right, and, and uh, they couldn't trace it. No, they finally put it together because there was the, the, um, uh, the medical examiner found little bits of adhesive, you know, oh. on, and so he had a patch. Was he smoking? But, what? And they, they figured it out. They found traces of... But don't you think that if a spouse works in a toxicology lab? So they'd figure it out, wouldn't yeah. you? I don't know. And, that, and that's yeah. the thing these days, you know, isn't, I mean, who is, if, some, if you're married and somebody kills you, who are the, the first person they're going to suspect? The spouse. Right. Because course, guess who usually it, does it? <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And, and that's a little common And you know why, there, right? don't you? <laughs> so all of you who are so happy about being married, just remember, if you get murdered, it's the person sitting next to you on the couch who's going to do it. But anyway. Mm, probably. This is a very positive show today. Yes. Isn't this fun? <laughs> you know, I don't know why I need to kill people in print, but if you go to a mystery writers conference, I'm going um, next uh, Thursday. Oh, that's two uh -huh. days from now. I don't know what I'm doing, but that's where I'm going. To, it's called Deadly Ink, and it's in mm -hmm. New Jersey. Deadly okay. Ink, it's, it's mystery writers. When you go to a conference of mystery writers, um, we are all so nice. <laughs> we really are. We're friendly. We're outgoing. We support each other. We help each other because, you see, we get to kill, maim, toss That's people right, over cliffs, poison them, all in print. Now, if you go to a romance writer's uh, conference, that's a whole different thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah, maybe they're really nasty people or something, no. you know, because they don't Well, they only the rip books, bodices. So. That's all they, that's the extent to which they, you know, yeah. So, but yeah, I, but I <laughs> You're just... You're trying so hard to do a serious interview here, <laughs> and you worked so hard on it, Greg. Yeah, I'm going to, okay, okay I'm going to behave. Kelly, you I know, know yeah, go ahead. I, no, but I like this, though, but I, I do think that's a very good point, though, about uh, murder and, and uh, marriage. <laughs> yeah. I want to explore this a little bit more here. Actually, You've never you know? been married, have you? And well, you're not and going why do you to think now? why? I'm scared. <laughs> really, Kelly. exactly. Yeah, I've read the you. statistics. Yeah. I get married every 15 years, whether I need to or not. <laughs> but, but the reason I. Oh, that's right. Well, you, do you want to talk about that? No. <laughs> <laughs> I know you didn't, so. But, uh, you know, the thing is. You always know it's a spouse, but yet people still go ahead and do it. Yeah, they do. Just it. like in this book, They're I mean, driven although to do it. kind of. I mean, no. Well, I won't give away too much, should I? No. But um, no, we won't give too. But let so me just why? tell you. So why? Why? Why do they? You know that that's the first. Oh, thing you gonna... know why? Because you're married. That's why. <laughs> you can't help but anyway, yourself. Is that graveyard it, shift? Can I tell you? Sure. She is shunted onto the graveyard shift. Uh, she is their top reporter, Maxie uh -huh. Poole. 
And she doesn't know why, because the graveyard shift is a horrible, horrible shift. If you've ever worked it, you know in news, like it, you're really. out in the seamy underbelly of La La Land, L.A. A lot of it takes place in MacArthur Park, and yep. there's no place more, you know, um, scary than MacArthur Park at night. And she's out there. Um, the shift is from 9 p.m. to 6 a.m., uh -huh. And, and you're the only one out there. They'll only put one reporter on it. Yeah. Uh, whereas the actually, whole rest of the crew is... Would they really a, put a woman out there by herself at sure. that time of night? <laughs> you oh. bet. We all did it. As a cub reporter, you worked the graveyard shift. I did. Everybody does. But you probably wouldn't do it as the anchor. Oh, no. No, no. Uh, no, not as an anchor. But it took me five years to get to that spot. Hmm. But Maxie Poole has been with the station for nine years, mm -hmm. and she gets put on the graveyard shift. Now, the only other uh, people they put on it besides the rookie reporters are mm -hmm. people they're going to fire. When they're going to fire a reporter, they shove them on the graveyard shift, hoping that they will quit. Then they don't have to pay severance, you know, and um, unemployment benefits. And so she doesn't know why she's on the graveyard shift, but she goes out there, she soldiers on, she does her job, uh, almost loses her job, almost loses her life mm -hmm. in graveyard shift. Well. Yeah. Yeah, and again, well, for anybody who wants to be a journalist, I mean, you really have, again, not only the dynamics of, you know, confidentiality and what's the, the source and the scoop and everything, but just the newsroom politics. Yes, and, and, all and there that. are, there are politics. You know it, you know it. This is a very big newsroom, 250 people strong, Channel 4. In the book, it's Channel 6. It looks an awful lot like Channel 4. The building, say, the people. It sounds a lot like NBC. Yeah. There's a soap <laughs> opera that they yeah. tape nearby. Fritz Coleman, uh, my darling yeah. weather guy, Fritz, uh, yeah. for those of you who are in L.A. and watching, uh, he always says, oh, I was the stud um, uh, uh, exercise trainer, right? Yeah, I, I go, yeah, that's right, Fritz, you know. <laughs> well, and you actually use several people, Fritz and Actually, Wendy. Fritz is in this book. Yep. Yeah, Fritz and his dog, Mac. Yeah, I do. I do use them. I ask them first, and I make them sign the releases. See, I didn't <laughs> yeah. sign a release here, so <laughs> big trouble. But she gives her verbal approval that uh, anything yeah. she says could be used against her. No. No, that's right. Hey. <laughs> sue her. Don't sue me. You know, that's right. But, uh, so... What we, okay, after 30 years practically with NBC or in broadcast, you know, what is your impression? Of, because actually one thing you also go into a, a bit, which I found interesting, and I've talked to other broadcasters about this on the show, um, Marta Waller from KTLA and Jeff Hall oh, from sure. KTLA. Yeah. Um, what do you think of the quality of local TV news? Because you, you have kind of the serious TV news people and then the fluff TV news people. You in know the what, Gregory? Tom Snyder says, I say I'm putting it on him, but he does, and I agree with him. He says, you know, we had the best of it, Cal. We had the best of it in the 70s and the 80s because they'd let us do investigative reporting. Uh -huh. They'd let us spend a week on a story or more if we needed to. Yep. <clears throat> you know, and now, uh, I say, I don't watch local news now. Mm. And it probably is because I don't have to. You know what we have now? We have cable. Yep. If you, if there's a story going down that you really want to know about, uh, you, you plug in and you can see it wall to wall and it's always on. Yep. And, you know, the networks are dying. The network news, uh, yep. you know, the half hour is, so is you, dying you, with ratings. So you think it's, so what, I don't, what's going to replace I don't, it? I don't much watch. Well, it's already replacing The cable it. Yeah. and the internet. And I, I don't watch local news anymore. And it's mm -hmm. not, not to say anything against local news. It's just that it's different. Um, but I remember, and I put it in one book. I can't remember which one, that um, the boss, who is Pete Capra, in my book, he's a cross between Pete Noyes, who was our managing editor, and Tom Capra, who was our news director. And both uh -huh. of them are crazy, by the way. These men, <laughs> they don't get sued again. They're both nuts. I mean, they come from the era where you take a reporter and shove them against the wall and beat them up for burying you had the one the guy lead. jumping on the desk or oh, something yeah, and that's, barking that's out Oh, yeah, that's Tom Capra. And, he did that yeah. all the time. Yeah, and um, he used to say, okay, no story more than a minute 15. Nothing. Preferably 45 seconds. Wow. Unless you run into the second coming. You meet Jesus Christ. You meet J.C. himself, and you get him on tape, and uh, he tells you his plans for the world. Then you got a minute 30. A minute 30. But beyond <laughs> that, you know, and they weren't kidding either. And then if there's a car chase, it'd probably be bumped to the second story. You know, I'm you know? probably the queen of the car chases. I was the first one to ooh, see. Ooh. I know. You started out as a, um, the traffic reporter, yes, I think, yes. right? Yes, in, the, in okay. a helicopter. Don O'Day, they called me. They so did you start on those car chases? Sounds like a stripper, doesn't it, Don O'Day? Don O'Day? Uh, <laughs> Dawn O'Day. Um, well, I, I, I was the, the first, I think, to recognize that people wanted to see this. You know, and, and you, because you know, and it go, and then I rude the day because it'll go through the four, the five, and into the six o'clock news before the guy either runs out of gas or gets shot or shoots somebody or whatever. Yeah. But, you know, that's the thing that people 
want to see. Yep. Well, I had Jeff Wald on, by the way, and, and he was described, or described himself oh, once I love Jeff. as the poster child of car chases. So you're the queen of car chases, and I yes, have a poster and he is, child. And yes, he is, because Jeff and I go back about the same amount of time. Oh. Yeah. Yes. So, but do you think, have they gone overboard with the car chases and stuff, or would you well, pull the plug? I, I, I don't watch them anymore. You, you know, if it's something that I need to see later, then I'll see the, the highlights, you know. But I'm not going to sit there and zombie out for an hour and a half while some lunatic, you know, has 12 cars chasing him. Are you? No. 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 You know? No. no. But they were a novelty at one point. And, and I, I don't know, but I've heard that it's especially L.A. You know, I'm regional. I'm, I'm a Los Angeles newscaster. Yeah. So, but I don't know if they do it in the rest of the country. <laughs> yeah, well, it was weird that I was talking to Jeff about this, too, that um, actually they broke into, I was watching, I was like in the dentist office or something, and they had the TV on, and one of the stations um, actually broke in and showed like a Dallas car chase here in oh, L.A. Oh, really? Know, live. But I thought, you know, I could see the L.A. car chases maybe, but from another city. Uh-huh. And being from Chicago, I don't, in Chicago, I don't remember that. I really no. think it's a Southern California thing. No, it's, it's, a, it's thing, a, you know? a rather recent phenomenon, you know. And, of course, everything happened when tape was invented, you oh. know, uh, because on film you wouldn't, on film, we used to bring the Too film late, in, yeah. dunk it in the juice, uh, wait until it developed an hour, an hour and a half, and then take some scissors and splice it and hang em, hang it up and make a story out of it, which took all day. Film now, 11. boom, you're live at 11, you know. <laughs> all right, we'll be back in just a minute with Kelly Lang. The book is Graveyard Shift. This is a story about the living reef the oldest city on Earth. These wondrous complex communities are the most diverse places on the planet and are so important that the ocean cannot exist without them. And we cannot exist without the oceans. Unfortunately, pollution and overfishing are destroying the world's coral reefs. We've already lost 25%, and the rest may perish within a generation, unless we act now. Protect the living reef, and we protect the ocean. Protect the ocean, and we protect ourselves. are back with Kelly Lang, author of Graveyard Shift. And she's talking still talking. To, she is talking. <laughs> she was talking to you during that whole commercial. I was planning your whole career, wasn't That's I? That's right. Actually, but keep saying the things you were saying it. I won't mind. That was very nice of you to say Going places. That, way, so. Going places. Thank you. This I appreciate man. that. That's, well, you have been from places the Marina and are Del Rey going more places. Down to El Segundo. No. <laughs> yeah. 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 Out the door is where right. I'm going to kick my ass out of yeah. here in half an hour probably. But, uh, but again, you've had such a long, successful career. Yes. Where... Well, you were talking a bit about what's happened with TV news over the past few years, but what, what's your reflection looking back? What would you tell, let's say, young reporters starting out today? Um, is it, you know, good, bad, indifferent? Well, it's you know? wonderful. It's still, you know, it is still a wonderful, wonderful career. I, I, you know, I can't begin to tell you. I mean, if we had a week, I couldn't, you know. Come it's, back. It's we'll exciting, and it's, yeah, I will. And it's, it's fun, and it's interesting, and it's scary, and it's... Um, it's terrorizing. It's never boring, do you know? Um, never. And where can you get, find a job like that that not for a second do you even have, um, you know? And ask people obnoxious questions you'd never get to ask them in real life without getting shot. Yes. How does it feel to have your, you know, <laughs> yeah. your, your back broken with it? No. Oh, don't you hate that? No, that but you know what? Oh, yeah. please. But you asked about, and this is a serious question because I talk to kids a lot. You know, I go... Uh, go to the schools and talk, and they want to know how to get in the business. Yeah. And um, you can't do it in L.A. or New York or Chicago mm -hmm. uh, anymore. I did. That was in the year one, you know, shortly after the Civil War. <laughs> you can't do it that way anymore, Greg. You have to go to, uh, you have to be willing. You have to pay a lot of dues now yeah. and, and be willing to, um, to go to a smaller market, go to Boise, go to Sacramento, go somewhere that's not one of the big key cities. Uh -huh. And go in and beg for a job and don't even, if they say, well, we can't pay you, uh, say, fine, uh, I'll sweep the floor and do whatever, <laughs> whatever you know, it takes and, to... and then you figure out who's who, where the bodies are buried, um, how to get a tape made mm -hmm. so that you send your tape out. And, and, you know, my mom, my mom always said, it's a four-letter word, but with, without it, you won't get anything, really, nothing good, and with it, you'll get just about anything you want. It's W-O-R-K. Yep. Do the work. That's yep. all. 
Well, and you you say too that um, you know starting on the smaller markets these days that's probably not such a bad thing though because all of those stations are owned by you know they're like a sister company of NBC oh, or you sure. know they're all owned by NBC or ABC or you there aren't any more independent TV stations no. practically. If so. you have the stuff, they'll find you. You know, if you, you will rise, you know, the old cream rises to the top. If you've got it, and especially if you're willing to work. I've seen people come and go at Channel 4 over my, you know, how many years? 642 years there. <laughs> and, and um, you know, like, for instance, somebody will come in, and uh, he's got an uncle who's a senator, and he's this and that, and a great hope, and, and won't, won't work, doesn't want to work. Guess what? They don't last. They don't make it. And Well, for, for the people who... You know, in other words, it's nice if you have the blonde and the looks and all that, but if you have substance behind it, too, it helps. You can't just go on Oh, no, you have to. You have to now. You, you, know, you can't just, yeah. you know, this is journalism. This isn't television. Some people think, I have a lot of people still who think, well, you, st you sat there every day and you read the news. No, 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 no. It's an all-day thing. You start at 10, 11 in the morning, and you, you're, you're there till well after midnight, you know. And, by the way, um, speaking of, uh, back in year one, though. No. Yes. But, um, you were the first um, female anchor on an NBC-owned station. That's right. You know, I was right. the first so many things in my field. I don't know how that happened. I was the first tele uh, radio helicopter reporter. I was the first news writer at KABC. And I was the first uh, anchor, yes, woman anchor, on any of the, because any of the stations. Because it used to be Any of the stations uh, across the country for NBC. You didn't see a whole lot of women on TV back as far as no. news anchors. I mean, it was just, it was You know what? When I started... Males. There were, yes, it was white males. You're right, Gregory. Of which you are one, and let me talk to you about that. No, uh, but, but and now they're know, all gone. No, when I first, yeah. <laughs> you're exactly right. I was my, I Where did they back go? In, Where did places, the I should have been in year one. You take over today. Oh, then, please. You know, you're, you're you're right. That's a that's a truism if I ever heard one. But um, um, when I started, each of the stations had one, and they called it girl. Okay, girl. This is before the women's movement. Do you have to go? Oh, Kelly, I'm, I'm so sorry. We're out of time. Oh, we'll you have to come back we'll and finish go, that we'll story. Will you come back sometime? We'll have dinner. I absolutely oh, will. But okay. anyway, I'll just tell you we're one gonna thing. We're going to talk off said, the record here. He said, um, uh, I'm sorry, honey, we have our girl. That's what they told me at Channel 2. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, so you have to keep, sure. These days you'd sue. Keep course, on. This keep is Kelly Lang. Yes, the it book is. is Graveyard Shift, um, NBC anchor, reporter, you name it. You've seen her on TV. Thank you very much, Kelly, for being here today. My pleasure. I You're terrific, Greg. Thank you. Well, you are great, and I hope you'll come back. I will. And Tomorrow. I'll take you up on that dinner, too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Maybe, Greg.